Hey guys, so in this lecture we're going to go over Markov chains, give a bit of introduction and look at how we can solve probabilities using this and using tree diagrams. So Markov chains are a sort of sequence of events or transitions in which the, out, um, the probability of an outcome is affected by the directly previous one. And the, what we cover in uh, this course is the two state Markov chains. So we're not um, caring about multiple outcomes, but rather like the binomial, there are only two different outcomes. So it's useful in regards to answering questions such as, if it rained on Thursday, what is the probability that it will rain on Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Uh, so it's even extends sort of like on conditional probability. So you can look sort of in the future, further ahead, or you can also look at long term. So given that uh, this is a probability of it occurring or given that this number of students are enrolled in such a subject what is a long term um, pro well, what is a long term probability or what is a long term number of uh, people in each of the different states so it's quite useful so there are two conditions for the Markov chain so firstly that the probability is uh, conditional uh, only on the previous outcome. So for this to sort of make sense is if we're talking about raining <coughs> and then if it rained on Wednesday then it would affect Thursday. So that would affect that. But Tuesday it doesn't matter. Like we don't mind if it rained, we don't mind if it didn't. It's only the previous one. If we're talking about a football team or a, um, a sporting team, it only matters on their last match. It doesn't matter their last five or six. So the Markov chains only refers and only matters when the last one affects the probability of the next one. And then the second um, key idea is that the conditional probabilities are the same every time. So the conditional probabilities remain constant. So what this means is that if you, s well, it's easiest with certain examples. So you have a sporting team. You said that the probability that they win is equal to 0 0.6 if they won their last game. And remember, it's only about the last game, if you remember about one. And then the probability of them winning if they had lost the previous was is 0 0.3. Now this, for the Markov chain to work, these two probabilities must remain constant. So these two must remain constant in that it doesn't matter how many they lose, it doesn't matter how many they win, they're still going to have a 30% chance of winning if they lost and a 60% chance if they won their last game. So remember about the last game, remember one. And as I said before, we're doing the two-state Markov, so you're only going to really, you're only going to have two outcomes that we care about. Right, so we we'll go on to a question, and it'll become a bit obvious, more obvious. Um, just quickly, that we will go on later about the transition matrices in a different video. However, this is related to the Markov chains. However, there is some confusion, but Markov chains are basically um, a way the general type of probability and what I've just explained, but the transition matrices are a type of solving them in a specific circumstance. So that makes a bit more sense, but they are interrelated. So f firstly, we'll yeah, start with a, um, a question. So we'll do the previous one. So we have a uh, soccer soccer team, and we're saying that the probability that they win is equal to 0 0.6 if uh, they won last and we'll say that the probability of them winning is 0 0.3 if they lost. So the first thing about this is that you can calculate some other probabilities as well. You can calculate the probability of them losing is equal to 0 0.4 if they won. And so that relates to this one here. So why is that the case? Well, 
if they've just won the last one, then the probability of them either losing or winning, we're assuming no draws, has to equal 1. So if there's a 0.60% chance that they'll win, there's a 40%. Oh, sorry for the typo. Oh, no, no. Yeah, the probability... Yeah, sorry about that. So the probability of them losing is still 40% if they have won their last game. So the probability of loss is 0 0.4, and the probability to win is 0 0.6. So then let's talk about if they lost their previous one. Well, if there's a 30% chance that they'll win, then the probability of losing is equal to 0 0.7 if they lost. Okay. So then you start, can start with the tree diagram. So we'll start up here and we'll be putting that. So they have a, a loss up here and then they have, we'll say, a win down here. So we don't have a previous an initial condition. So we'll just say that the probability of them uh, losing this game is... 0 0.5 and the chance that they'll win is 0 0.5 so we can like that would be included in the question that the initially they have a half chance of losing and winning their first game so then after their first game we then also have sort of an extension of this tree diagram so we have the win down here and a loss up here. So then, for the, now for their next game, so that was the first game, now we're looking, so, so that was their first game, and now this is their second game. So now this second game does, is affected by the previous one. So if they've won, then that means they have a 0 0.6 chance of winning again and a 0.4 chance if they lose. Then up here, if they've lost, they have a 0.3 chance of winning and a 0.7 chance of losing. So at this point here, then is continues as the win. This point here continues as the win. And then this here is the loss. And this here is the loss. Then, you can continue this for the third game. However, so it's the same thing. You just look at here, so the initial conditions, which I'll tell you, and then you look at the win, and you can look at these probabilities. So it'll go 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.3. Then up here, you can calculate if they've just lost, it'll be 0 0.7, 0 0.3. If they just won, it'll be 0 0.6, 0 0.4. From here, 0 0.4, we'll go on to 0 0.4, 0. Uh, if they've lost, it will go to 0 0.7, 0 0.3, and you can fill in this table. So completed. Yeah, so it looks something like this. And if you are a bit confused, just give it a pause and have a look at it, as it does look quite confusing and it has got a lot of content on there. So the first thing is that, just the color coding, that the blue is when they're the, the team's losing, and then the green is when they're winning. So initially we have this initial condition, so this is the first game, so there are no previous uh, games that they've won or lost. Typically a question will say they won their last game, they lost their last game, however this time we're just assuming 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Yeah, so your first game you have that and that. Then your second game is along here. So if they lost their first game, then they can either lose or they can win. And this is assigned the probability by the 0 0.7 and 0 0.3, which is what we were saying before. If they've lost, then their probability of losing is 0 0.7. If they've lost, their probability of winning is 0 0.3. Then the other, conversely, you have if they've won, then the probability of winning is 60%. If they've won, then the probability of losing is 40%. So one of the key features along here is that the branches, these two branches, I'll just not like over here, whatever the probability is here, so let's say call that x and y, well x plus y must equal 1. And as you can see that again, 0 0.7, 0 0.3 equals 1. 0 0.6, 0 0.4 equals 1. So they always equal 1. Now, if you want to know what the probability is of an outcome, this is like a typical tree diagram question. So if you wanted to know the probability of a win-win-win, 
then you just go and grab the win, 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 and you would get 0 0.5. So the probability of three wins, because that's the only way you can get three wins, is 0 0.5 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.6. which would give you 0 0.18. So they have an 18% chance of winning all their three games. And then you can calculate other probabilities. So the question could ask something more like, what is the probability of two wins? Or, yeah, of two wins. So they only want exactly two wins now. So two wins, we have to look at the different scenarios which give this outcome. You can start off with a win, then have another win, and then you can have a loss because that's two wins. So it goes 0 0.5, 0 0.6, and then you have to go past that loss here. Yeah, and that's zero point. Or you could go have a win, then you could have a loss, then you could have a win again. However, this th th this scenario is more unlikely. And so why would that be the case? Well, if you've just won, then you're less likely to lose by given the probabilities we just had. So if you're less likely to lose, then that's going to have a smaller probability. Then if you've just lost, lost then there will be a lower probability that you will win. So this is unlikely, but it still could occur. The other scenario is you could lose, and then you could win, win. So three out of the eight possible scenarios that satisfy um, this condition. So it does get quite messy, so that's why when you do, do these calculations, make sure they are quite large. And instead of putting the win, win, loss, just understand um, maybe use like different colors or uh, techniques like that just to not get yourself confused. So the probability of two wins is equal to the chance of having a loss win win plus the probability of uh, win loss win plus the probability of win win loss. And you can see that there are three combinations. So you plug in the numbers to there, so you have those values in, you get 0 0.27. Um, so, yeah, just with these questions, draw a tree diagram, look at the different scenarios. If they're asking for a specific one, they, they win, 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 then you can just look at the one row. However, it's more likely that you're going to have to look at different outcomes. By hand, I'd say three um, games is probably, or what whatever the game is or the question three is probably the largest maybe four however as i said another differing factor could be with the first game instead of giving you a probability initial probabilities they say that they did win the first game or they did lose the first game so therefore you would need to put in um, a one and a zero and effectively by putting a one and a zero in you can just eliminate that bottom hand of the triangle so instead of having a, um, a split off for the first you can just have um, like this point here and this point here and you can say that this here is the first game here is the second game and here is the third game so if there was initial condition then this could represent a four scenario game now I did mention transition matrices before and I will go over them uh, in another video however you cannot use, just while the tree diagram's here, you cannot use transition matrices to work out a question like this. Transition matrices help you calculate the probabilities at the very end, like at the tips, if you want a visual sort of aspect, sort of like a, the final scenario, but rather if you want to look at different uh, combinations and you don't care about the end scenario, you just care about like two wins over the three games rather than saying what is the probability of winning the last game, then you have to use a tree diagram. If you're confused at the moment, that's alright, there'll be some other videos on Markov chains as well. Just make sure if you're confused, have a pause, look at the tree diagram and try and understand the situation graphically. Because with these probability questions, it's a lot easier if you can uh, get the worded question and put it in a visual scenario.